Ankiview.tv here at ONS 2010. Joining us now is Carmen Jacobs, research nurse supervisor at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And we're talking about something many of you have not seen or rarely see, and that's neuroendocrine tumors. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. All right, so what are they, Carmen? Neuroendocrine tumors are tumors that arise from neuroendocrine cells anywhere in the body. So the difference is that mainly uh, when we talk about different types of tumors for in cancer, you're looking at specific disease sites, lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer. In neuroendocrine tumors, we're looking more at the pathology of the disease, where it originated, what type of cells. So neuroendocrine tumors can actually be found anywhere in your body. You can have neuroendocrine tumors of the lung, of the breast, of the pancreas, of the colon, small bowel, appendiceal, anywhere. However, the most common ones occur in the gastrointestinal tract. What is the difference between prevalence and incidence of neuroendocrine tumors? That's a very interesting question because even though people do not know about neuroendocrine tumors, it's often considered a very uh, uncommon type of cancer where it could be, but the incidence is really in the rising. Uh, we have seen that the incidence has been rising in the last 20, 30 years. It could be perhaps because of better prognosis, better treatment for the symptoms of the disease, or but the prevalence, and this is what many people do not know, is that neuroendocrine tumors are second to colon cancer as prevalent in any other than any other type of gastrointestinal tumor. Uh, more than is more common than pancreatic cancer. It's more common than small bowel. It's more common than any of the cancers that you find in the gastrointestinal tract, except for, of course, colon cancer. What are the challenges in terms of prognosis? Because the tumors can arise anywhere in the body, that was the, maybe the challenge in the prognosis, because depending on where it started is what the prognosis is going to be. Neuroendocrine tumors can be uh, classified as either carcinoid tumors or islet cell tumors, which the carcinoids can arise anywhere in the body and then the islet cells are the ones that started in the pancreas. So those have a very different prognosis than the ones uh, that arise in the rest of the body. At the same time, as they are known to be kind of indolent tumors that slow grow, uh, grow pretty slowly, uh, people tend to think, oh, it's going to be okay, I'm going to live a long time. But however, because of that same uh, problem, they get diagnosed usually when they're metastatic. So once they're metastatic, it is a fatal disease. People are going to die of this cancer of neuroendocrine tumor, especially if they have already metastasized. Now, Carmen, neuroendocrine tumors are considered rare, but yet at the MD Anderson Cancer Center, they're pretty common. Can you we talk are. about we are in our center, we have a couple of doctors, physicians that specialize only in neuroendocrine tumors, or that the majority of the cancer patients that they see are patients with neuroendocrine tumors. I believe that uh, in the last that we counted or so, we had over 400 cases of neuroendocrine tumors per year that we had seen. Uh, I, want, I work with one of our best physicians in neuroendocrine tumors. So we do see quite a bit of them. I would say that I have seen hundreds of patients with neuroendocrine tumors, and then we do, of course, our clinical trials with neuroendocrine tumors, and I myself do clinical trials. So uh, it, it, it is not growing. I don't want to think that it is just like the, it's getting worse for people with neuroendocrine tumors. I think that it's just for being more aware of it, and that's why we are knowing more about it. Carmen, thanks for stopping by and, and sharing some of your expertise on this rare type of tumor. You're very welcome. Carmen Jacobs from the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, joining us on Occuview.tv.